Reading 50 from the Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Uspensky by Dr. Maurice Nicole, Volume 3. Tonight we speak again about personality and essence. Because all self-observation leads into that question anew at different stages. What in me is essence? What is personality? It might be said that Personality is the grown-up side, in essence, the ungrown side of ourselves. The point, however, is that the grown-up side is not really ourselves. It fits like a tight costume round us, but can, under certain circumstances, be stripped off. The real person then appears, quite unlike what the personality made him appear to himself and to others. Why is so much said in this work about the necessity for essence to grow? Essence cannot be stripped off. The real person, the person that remains after personality is removed, is the essence. A person may have a noble personality, but this is not the real person. When the safeguards and restraining influences of life are removed, and all fear of exposure or loss of reputation or the consequences of the law are done away with, what lies behind this noble personality emerges. That is, ungrown, undeveloped, essence appears. We must not imagine that essence is wholly beautiful and charming. The real man appears separated from the personality that has surrounded him hitherto. People do not understand how, if certain outer restraints and fears were removed, they would not lead the careful lives they do. They do not understand that their behavior is not from within, but is caused by external circumstances. That is, they do not see that personality is active, but not essence. Now, we know that essence manifests itself openly and uncovered until about three or four years of age. Then personality begins to surround essence, masking it, and takes charge. Personality is formed by imitation and education, by praise, by fear of consequences. But it is not the individual himself. The real person, the essence, remains covered over and passive. Now, whatever is done by personality is done through the force of external circumstances. That is, it is done from without, not from within. In this sense, it is unreal, not the real person. Let me repeat, what is done through personality is done through the force of external circumstances. That is, life drives the machine of personality. External circumstances make you act as you do. You may imagine you are free, but you are not free. Whatever you do is due to external circumstances acting on your particular kind of acquired personality. Notice how external circumstances put people in great or small positions. It is not them. It is the force of external circumstances. All the time we say I to what we do, as if we were doing it. We do not suspect, save through genuine self-observation, that it is external circumstances acting on personality that make us do as we do. It is not I from within doing it. Ordinarily, what you think is really your I is only a collection of I's in the personality that are for the moment in agreement responding to outside impressions, that is, responding to external circumstances. Let us go back to what was said, namely, that what you do is not from essence but from personality. Now suppose in some way you could act only from undeveloped essence. It would be foolish, even not human. So here lies the paradox of personality and essence. To be able to act from essence requires a development of essence. The work teaches that the first step to bring about the development of essence 
is the formation of personality. It then says that for essence to grow, personality must become passive. To say that personality must teach essence is one way of putting it, a way I have always thought a wrong way of putting it. I would rather say essence must learn from personality. The esoteric problem, the task of the work, is how to make essence grow. It does not grow from itself save to a point. Something else is necessary. This is the central idea and explains why esoteric teaching, religions, and, in fact, all B influences exist. How to make essence grow is the real esoteric problem. How to make the real grow in us so that there is no duality of acquired personality and born essence. The difficulty is that essence cannot be compelled to grow. No external compulsion can make essence grow. You cannot compel a small child to grow, essentially. Why? Because each child is a self-developing organism by creation. That is, it can only develop itself. Since essence cannot be persuaded directly by outside force, personality is formed around essence. This is the first step in the scheme for man on earth, coming down from the sun octave. The trouble is that man stops at that point. Namely, he has a personality formed for him and then identifies with it and takes it as I, as himself. For this reason, he suffers from inner disharmonies all his life. He does not know he is half-formed. For this acquired personality may give no outlet to essence. A very strict upbringing means a very tight, rigid personality, and so the making of personality more passive becomes a formidable problem. Yet the point remains that unless essence grows, the man is a failure esoterically. He is perhaps a very good man, but mechanically so. He is not really a good man, but an acquired imitation of one. The mechanically good and the mechanically bad are therefore seen as the same in the light of this work. Only understanding can make essence grow, and this can only enter a man through new knowledge that comes in first through the personality. So, essence can only grow through new knowledge. A special knowledge, that is, in short, esoteric teaching. And this must first come in via the personality from outside, from peculiar external circumstances. The personality transmits it. It means the death of personality eventually. But personality does not know this. The new knowledge has a force behind it, not derived from life. Mr. Uspensky used to repeat again and again that it is impossible to escape from personality and buffers save through a special force and that we have not this force ourselves. We have to get in contact with this force. Then, personality can gradually become passive when it must, so that essence can grow. Then it becomes a matter whether you wish to follow understanding or not. Essence is lazy, like all primitive peoples. Laziness is a very deep, powerful thing. That is why the work says that once you really understand why a thing is wrong and still do it, you, in a real sense, sin. That is, miss the mark. In connection with essence, Mr. Uspinski once said that from the standpoint of the astral or planetary world, essence is often more or less like an animal and that essentially there are very few human beings at this level. He said that humanity scarcely exists at a higher level when stripped of all pretense and quite naked. Now, if we do not steal from ourselves, no matter what the circumstances, it is essential. If I do a thing because no one is looking, or I wish a reward or praise, 
or from fear. It is not from within, but from outside. That is, from external circumstances, from personality. It is not real. When stripped of external life, what will I be? When personality is removed, what remains that is real? I advise you all to think about this problem that arises from the fact that man is created to be a self-developing organism. You will see how all external compulsion and social systems of that kind will never develop man and will, in fact, separate him from essence completely. All the long process and living of the work is to pass from personality to essence, bringing to essence the gifts personality has acquired. Sooner or later, somehow or other, somewhere or other, we are unmasked, and essence is revealed as ourselves. Do you recollect the masked balls of a former age? At midnight, we had to unmask. <laughs>